World War II ended 76 years ago, but even today some World War II armoured vehicles remain in service with armies all over the world. And I'm not talking about vehicles used for ceremonial displays, but still serving as combat vehicles. The following examples are not an exhaustive list, and obtaining completely accurate numbers is difficult regarding certain countries. However, let's begin with the most widely used World War tank in service today, the ubiquitous T-34-85. The Soviet T-34 first entered service in 1941 on the Eastern Front against the Germans. Incredibly, it remains in service in several nations around the world in 2021, some even seeing combat. North Korea received about 650 T-34-85s from the Soviet Union. It was the tank that led its invasion of South Korea in 1950. They still appear at military parades today, and a few dozen remain in service with reserve units. Vietnam was another big T-34 operator before and after the Vietnam War. Although replaced by more modern types, a few T-34s linger on in service today, on the contested island of Trong Sa, in the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea, where the Vietnamese use them as static coastal artillery. These were vehicles believed to have been supplied by the USSR in 1972. Transporting these tanks out to the islands was difficult and expensive, hence the Vietnamese have left these older types in place. Other nations also operate T-34s today, including Guinea with 30 operational, Guinea-Bissau with 10, and Mali with at least 21 operational. Laos in Southeast Asia sold its last 30 T-34s back to Russia in 2019, and Cuba is supposed to have some still in service. But in Yemen, the T-34 has continued to see combat in the endless conflicts that have ravaged the region. In Yemen, a new version of the T-34 has appeared, the Lanyard T-34. You're probably asking yourself what the hell did I just see, however, there is an explanation. Obtaining shells for T-34-85s in the Middle East is difficult today. They have basically been reloading used shells. The dangers of overpressure rupture in a 70-plus-year-old breech and barrel killing the gunner and crew has led the Yemenis to find a novel way of firing their guns. Using a lanyard strung through a pistol port from a safe firing distance seems to be the order of the day. These tanks are also not much protection against RPGs or other modern anti-armor weapons, an added incentive to use them remotely in combat. The M8 light armoured cars saw extensive service with US and British Commonwealth forces all over the world during World War II, the British calling it the Greyhound. With a crew of four and a 37mm main gun, it equipped reconnaissance units from 1943 onwards, with the last vehicles coming off the production line in June 1945. Post-war, the U.S. exported surplus M8s to friendly nations all over the world, where it has soldiered on in the inventories of several militaries right up to the present day. In Africa, three nations still have M8s in service. Senegal has 10, Burkina Faso 10, and Cameroon 8. More continue to serve in South America, with Paraguay fielding 12 vehicles and Peru about 30, in addition to more modern armoured personnel carriers. Paraguay is also notable for still having in service the oldest World War II tanks in the world. Whereas many of the T-34-85s already mentioned currently serving were actually built post-war, Paraguay's M3 Stuart light tanks were all built prior to 1943, making them 78 years old in 2021. The M3 first entered US service in 1941, serving in all theatres of World War II, and was later upgraded to the M5 version. The British used the type extensively in the North African Desert Campaign, and it was also used to equip US reconnaissance units until replaced by the M24 Chaffee in 1945.
In 2016, Paraguay brought 15 Stuarts back into service from storage, the tanks having been upgraded and with new engines. They are expected to serve on for several more years yet. The Soviet ISU-152 self-propelled gun appeared in 1943. It mounts a 152mm gun designed to kill German Tiger and Panther tanks. This monster, called the Beast Killer by the Soviets, was exported to several Soviet-friendly nations and saw service in the Middle East conflicts between Egypt and Israel. One export destination was North Korea, and it is known that several 152s remain in active and reserve units, most probably as mobile artillery platforms. North Korea is reported to have a few Soviet BA-64 armoured cars in reserve service. Produced between 1942 and 1946, this 2.4-tonne lightly armoured vehicle was cheap to make and extremely reliable, and was used extensively by other communist nations post-war. Another iconic World War II American vehicle is the M3 Half-Track. An early armoured personnel carrier, in total around 38,000 would be built. Used everywhere by the US, it also helped to equip the British and Soviet armies during World War II. Again, these vehicles were heavily exported to US-friendly nations during the Cold War. Mexico still had some in service as late as 2019. Today, two nations definitely still use the M3. Senegal has 12 currently serving in its army, while Peru still has between 50 and 60 vehicles on inventory. Our final World War II armoured vehicle is the Soviet Su-100 tank destroyer, that entered Red Army service in October 1944. Armed with a 100mm anti-tank gun, it was developed from earlier vehicles, in a quest to deal with heavy German armour. Its gun could even penetrate the Tiger I at a distance of 2 kilometres. The Soviets withdrew them from service in 1967, but Warsaw Pact and Soviet-friendly nations received many surplus models. It remains in service today in five countries. Algeria reportedly has 50 in reserve, while neighbouring Morocco has 25 on strength, though only 8 are reported to be operational. Yemen has an astounding 70 examples, although many are now destroyed or inoperable. North Korea and Vietnam both are reported to have about 100 SU-100s in some form of military service. In addition, Russia keeps many SU-100s in holding facilities or in deep storage. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.